Hey, it's Todd Graves. Welcome back to my book review on the single plane golf swing, Play Better Golf the Motor and Way. Now, today we're going to talk about chapter 10 and chapter 11. If you're enjoying these book sections and these reviews, and I keep going through these, these chapters to kind of detail all the information in this book, make sure you hit the subscribe button and that little bell icon there so you get notified every time I produce a new video on the channel. But here's what we're going to talk about today something that a lot of instructors maybe take for granted, and I want to get into some detail today about the finish position. Now, why is the finish so important? Well, let me tell you a quick story, and then we'll get into some of the mechanics of this. So what if I gave you a sports car, and I said, I want you to drive the car, it, this car goes 200 miles an hour, and you're excited because you get to drive this car on a racetrack, and, and it goes, and you're gonna have some fun with this car. But then I said to you, hey, listen, this car is really fast, but the brakes only stop you at 80 miles an hour. So my question for you is this, would you ever go over 80 miles an hour? And the answer is probably no, because you're not confident that you're, you can drive the car fast because you can only slow it down if you're going 80 miles an hour. Well, that's what the importance of the finish position is here in the golf swing. Consider this. So when you're swinging a golf club, everybody talks about the movement of a golf swing. So we talk about, you know, rotation in the back swing and then rotation in the through swing. So we go back two directions, right? We go this direction and we go this direction. And that's, that's important. I talk about it in my book. We talk about the proper movement, how we stabilize against the trail leg and all that stuff. You can see it in chapter 10 and 11. I'm reviewing the golf swing in these chapters. You can see me kind of going frame by frame and kind of showing you how the swing works. But the insides of the swing, there's a braking system. And that's what I want to talk about when we talk about the finish position is how the body is actually slowing down and stopping. It's not hard to do. This is a, it's a simple thing to do in, in our, when, when I talk swing mechanics and I teach you this, but I want you to understand this because it's important. And so if you're the guy, one of those guys that has a fast car, because we, we, we're all, what I've learned is that people can move pretty fast, but if their braking system of their swing isn't working correctly, if, they're, if they can't do this well, if they can't get to this position, which I call the brakes of the swing, then you won't swing fast. So a lot of times the reason you're having problems producing speed is not because you're not fast, not because you're not strong, not because you can't do it. It's mostly because you're simply in such a poor position going into your finish, you haven't put the brakes on correctly, you don't have brakes, that you don't swing fast. So that's the conversation we're gonna have today. Now one of the things I want you to look at very quickly is this top view of Mo Norman's golf swing. It's a rare view, and I've showed this a few times, but I love this angle of the swing. And here's why I like looking at the top view of Mo, is because when you look at this, what you see is when you watch the club as Mo gets down through impact, and notice how the club's coming through the impact area, but I want you to pay particular attention to the lead shoulder blade. And not the shoulder necessarily, because the shoulder's attached to the arm. So if you look at the arm, it's kind of attached to the shoulder. But when you look at that top view, look at the shoulder blade. And what you're seeing is the shoulder blade actually stays in position as the arms continue to move to the extension in, in, in the extension as he goes into his finish. And here's what's happening there. And, and, and this is what's so important, is the lead shoulder blade is slowing down and, and almost stopping as the body rotates around it. This is the braking system of the golf swing. So in other words, the, the rotation of the torso has to open up, so that's what's happening in the swing. The body's opening up like this, and then what happens from here is this shoulder is slowing down as the arms and shoulders continue to the finish position. So the finish is a, is a product of the acceleration of and rotation of the body, the hands, and the arms around a stable lead shoulder. I call this, and you've seen me do this in some of my videos, I call it like hitting a wall. Your body is hitting a wall so that you can accelerate the arms through. It's that bracing acceleration and that feeling that you have something to rotate around that's going to allow you to accelerate the club through impact. That's the finished position. So let's just kind of go through the finished position and what's happening how it's, it's, it's a sequence of events and to finish, and I wanna show you what I want you to practice to make sure you get there. Now, let's go through this starting again. I'm gonna give a quick review here, backswing, downswing, and then the braking system on the through swing, just so you can see how it all works together into the finish. 
And then we'll talk about the last thing that Mo did, which is that kind of final position here. Okay. So once again, when I talk about the golf swing, I'm not just talking about movement here. I'm talking about stabilization and movement. So here we go. Into the backswing, I've stabilized around a trail leg. You're going to see that in the previous videos in the book, bracing against that trail leg. You transition into a stable lead leg. See how that's stability there? So there's another thing, another braking system going on here is because the foot is rotated and the knee is flexed, nice stable lead leg, right? So that's very important because that's stopping this part of, of the pelvis. It's, it's creating a limitation. The other limitation being created is this trail heel being on the ground, right? So notice how it's all working together now. These positions of the body are creating stopping points and stabilization. So now what happens is the only thing left here, when I'm coming down, the only thing left to do, guess what can keep going? The torso can keep going and the, the arms and then the hands and the club can keep going. So there's where speed is accelerating through the ball. So there you go. Now watch this. As I accelerate through and the arm extends, the torso, look at my torso. It's in a position where it can't do a whole lot. It's almost stuck. You know what's not stuck though? What I mean by stuck is that lead shoulder, it's, it's, the braking system's been put on, right? So there's your extension. Now watch this. The only thing left to go, arms and hands. And then arms meaning shoulders as well. So here you go, acceleration, and then shoulders, not shoulder blades. Watch this, finish, see that? So I'm kind of giving you a slow motion view of the braking system. Watch it from here. Gets through, I'm hitting towards you now, so it's an acceleration. There's extension, now watch this. Watch how it's just arms folding up onto plane. Now I'll do it down the line. Impact, look at, look at the body ex extension. Watch this, this is arms, hands, and front of the shoulders, right? So what I'm, what I'm putting you through in this, in this process here is I'm putting the body, because of the bends of the body and the rotations of the body, giving you the arm movement around a stable lead shoulder. Does that make sense? That was such an important part for me. Now, let me tell you another kind of uh, story about go what goes on here. If you are unstable, so if you, and I'll just kind of go through where I see inst instabilities when I teach people. If your lead foot isn't rotated, if you're, you have trouble getting into a, a stable lead knee because of that, you, and you don't stop this first, then you won't stop this correctly. See what happens? So it's working itself from the first stabilizer up. So the first thing that stabilizes is this. So if you're not correct there, you won't get that. The second stabilization is this. If you don't get this, you won't get this. See what's happening? Stabilization, stabilization, stabilization gives you acceleration. Got it? Because what's so important about that is if one of those is off in that order, you don't get this one and you don't get speed. All right? Very important stuff in the finish position. So now we see this occur in the finish. So we see these nice, the stabilization here, the acceleration of the club, the stabilization here, and then the acceleration of the arms. There's your finish position. I want the head after impact and after extension. I want the head to move forward because why do I want the head to move forward? Because what's happening here is this is staying still, but this isn't, and it brings your head forward. I want your body, I want your weight directly over your lead leg. There's your finish, okay? No reverse C of your body. That's gonna create stress in your back. So head moves forward, look at that finish. There's your finish. And that's what I call the finish position because the body has stopped moving. And then that is what Mo did because think about this for a second. If this position is stable, the lead shoulder position is stable, then standing up takes all, you stand straight up, takes the pressure off your back. Nothing ever is going backward in that motion. Does that make sense? That's why Mo stood up because what you see here is nothing ever is going backwards. It's always going into the knee, rotation, stabilize here, stay there, and then stand up. This is what you see in my book, how Mo finishes the golf swing, the motion's finished, and then he does that pointing as he does at the very end, which is his way of just standing up, taking pressure off the back, which is very unique to Mo, but it's important, and I want you to do that if you feel comfortable doing that. All right, so let's take a look, quick look at the top view of the golf swing. Now, the top view is a great view. And here's why, because it's, it's rarely seen from the top angle, but now I, can, I get to see what the club face is doing through impact, which 
you know, we can talk about how the club stays square for a period of time. So watch this. So when I get into the address position here, notice how obviously the, the torso is tilt, which in the book I'm covering the bends of the body a lot. Bends are very important because the bend of the body affects the shoulder position. So side bends are very important and it, see how it kind of opens my shoulder position. Now look at my lead shoulder there from the top view. I'm going to come down and go, start going through impact. Now watch what happens right about here. You're seeing the shoulder. Look at the lead shoulder. It's not moving a whole lot. See that? So the lead shoulder gets to a point where it's not moving a lot. But look at the hands will come and deliver the club into impact. And now watch this. See the lead shoulder, how it, how it kind of stays in position? Look at that. The blade isn't moving, but I can still move the club. Now watch the club head as it goes through impact. Or look, it can stay square for a period of time. Now that's not because you're turning the shoulders. It's because the, the trail side of the body is turning, right? So the lead, the body is turning slightly and the shoulders are moving, but look at my shoulder blade, see that? So this is what's happening as you come into impact. The lead blade is slowing down, stopping. Arms and shoulders are moving, see that? One more time. Club's coming down. The lead shoulder blade is stopping. Watch the arms and shoulders moving, see that? And look at the club, stay square, boom. And then extension and finish. Now watch even through there, as I get to extension, see the extension? Watch the shoulder blade, even through extension. It's staying in position and then up. So the shoulder blade has very little movement to it. That is a critical part of how the shoulders are working and the braking system works in the swing. Now, one more thing here, and this is in chapter 11. We're gonna get into some of these things about how to practice. Now I have this conversation and I'm having it with you because this is where you can know all this. Look, you can watch every one of these videos and you can watch all the videos on my channel. You can go to my membership site and you can watch all the videos on the membership site. And some of them you might find entertaining. Some of them are very instructional. I'm giving you all the content. It's all there, right? But now you got to do it. <laughs> and now you have to get the job done. You have to work on this correctly. So my, my conversation with you right now is how are you going to do this? And let me tell you just a, a quick funny story and I'll, I'll give a shout out to my brother, Tim. If you don't know Tim Graves, he's my partner in business with Graves Golf. He is the, has the greatest short game of every human being I've ever seen. He's a master short game instructor of our academy. So check into some of our short game stuff. And one of the reasons why I don't put a lot of short game on my channel is because I want my brother, he's going to join us at some point and start helping with some of the short game stuff with a single plane swing. But my brother and I, one time we're teaching a school. And this was down in Orlando, Florida. This has probably been 10 or 11 years ago. And it was kind of warm in Orlando and Tim flew in to teach the afternoon session of the school. And Tim had had the flu, so he wasn't feeling well. And so he taught the afternoon, I didn't see him. And then he goes back to the, the house we were staying, living in down there. And I get this phone call and it's Tim. And he says, hey, call an ambulance, not feeling well. I'm like, okay, what's going on? He goes, just call an ambulance. He goes, I gotta get to the hospital. So next thing I know, an ambulance is showing up and it's taking Tim to the hospital and I'm following the, the ambulance to the hospital and we get there. And Tim had, had been really dehydrated and he, he was low in potassium and his, his electrolytes were low and so he's, he's in tough shape. So they hook him up to a bunch of the IVs and they're, they're, they're filling him full of fluids and potassium and all the things he needed to get him back hydrated. So we're in the hospital and we're, we're sitting there and I'm just kind of hanging out with Tim, making sure he's okay in the hospital. But, you know, when you fill with fluids, you got to use the bathroom every five minutes, right? So I would have to grab the IV bag and walk Tim to the bathroom. And here's what I would do. It was kind of known in, in my academy or in just in my lifetime that I can't pass a mirror. Like I can't pass a reflection without checking my golf swing. <laughs> so, of course, guess where we are? Tim's in the bathroom and I'm, I'm, I take his IV bag and I put it in the sink. And of course, I'm looking at my address position in the mirror. And it was, it, Tim was like, are you kidding me? I'm about to die here in the hospital and you have to check your swing out in this mirror. So just to shout out to my brother, I didn't mean to try to kill you that day. However, I did make my grip better and worked on it in the mirror. But my point to the story is this, is that you have to get feedback on your practice. You have to find ways, whether it's with your phone, which now obviously you can go to the golf course and you can put your phone up and you can videotape yourself swinging, right? I mean, in video and look at it and match the model. You have to find ways of getting feedback. So part of this in my book is like, look, you know the information now. You know what to do. You have a model. I've given you some specifics. I've given you some key points to your mechanics. Now, you have to go make sure you're doing it when you practice. 
Because I can tell you one thing as a teacher that I've learned for the thousands of people I've taught is that nobody can feel what they do just by feeling it. And so many people say, hey, I tried your swing. And I'm like, did you? Did you try it? I mean, let me see the video of your swing. Did you really try it? Because I don't know if you got it right. And so I had to find ways, like using mirrors, using video, uh, and coaches are great. Like I, I, yesterday I was with Chandler on the range, one of my master coaches, and I said, hey, check my address out real quick. What does it look like to you? And he goes, oh, it looks good. You know, he gave me a little adjustment. So I'm a coach, but feedback, little bits of feedback to make sure you're matching that model and getting perfect. That's what's gonna get you to the right, to the right single plane swing and doing it correctly. Because here's the answer to every one of your swing problems. Whether you hit it fat, thin, short, long, whatever it is, just match the model and do it correctly and you're gonna get there. So that's it for today. I hope you get to that. Now, keep in mind that if you're enjoying these book reviews and in these chapters, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure that you hit that little bell icon to get notified every time I have a new video. And I'm gonna come back to you in the next video. We're gonna do a section on how to practice. So don't miss out on the how to practice video because I'm gonna show you a whole session on how to get the most every time you go out to the driving range.